Hello everyone, my name is Tony Burke. I'm a blogger at datacenteroverlords.com and an IT instructor. You can find me at Twitter at tburke, that's T-B-O-U-R-K-E. And today I'd like to talk to you about pets versus cattle and go into a little bit of a deeper dive than you might have heard. So many of you have heard of the analogy of pets versus cattle, and that's in reference to how we deal with virtual machines and how we deal with our infrastructure. The idea is that if we treat a virtual machine like a pet, it's more of a traditional server operational model, um, we, give it, we give it a name, uh, just like we give our, our beloved pets names. We take care of them when they're sick, um, and we give them, uh, and uh, we do whatever we can to, to make sure that they live for as long as possible. Cattle, on the other hand, um, we give them numbers and not names, something uh, automatically generated. And if they do get sick, we, then we typically will destroy them and recreate them. Now, it's kind of a morbid um, analogy there. It was first uh, used, I think, by Bill Baker at Microsoft, um, and then Randy Bios gave a, a pretty famous talk. Uh, I think he was talking about CERN. Um, and, th and that's how it, it, it entered the, uh, the IT operations pantheon. But um, today we're going to go into a little bit of deeper dive of, uh, of this uh, topic in general. So again, in terms of, of how we do server operations, um, with a pet, typically, a pet is either a physical server, um, something that we might have been doing with in the 1990s with Unix systems and then with Linux systems in the early 2000s and then virtual machines from uh, mid-2000s on on. We'd install some sort of operating system onto a virtual machine onto a physical host. And then we would install the applications, the app data, and configuration. And then we would keep this server up running for as long as we could. I remember back in, in my Unix administrator days, is because I started out as a condescending Unix administrator, um, we would be very proud of the uptimes of our servers. We, we'd keep them up and running for as long as we possibly could. It, would be, uh, it wouldn't be unusual for one of us to brag that, hey, I've got this server. It's been up and running for 500 days or 600 days or 1,000 days. And we were proud of that. Of course, nowadays, if something's been up for a thousand days, it's probably hasn't been, it, it, not probably, but it hasn't been patched in three years. So it's not that like that we have to worry about zero day exploits. We have to worry about three year exploits. So we don't really do it that way anymore. But we still treat a lot of our virtual machines and a lot of our infrastructure like pets or like Highlanders. We get, they live as, for as long as they possibly can and um, are rarely, rarely ever retired. Cattle, on the other hand, um, from an operational perspective, is operated very differently. Um, for one thing, we have some sort of repository of uh, OS images. So we might have one for Ubuntu, we might have one for Windows, we might have one for uh, CentOS or Red Hat. And we instantiate a virtual machine based off of one of these predefined image, one of these immutable images. So someone went through the trouble of creating a virtual machine template, a virtual machine instance, put it into a, a, a file format that we can easily spin up new, new ones of these. Um, so from the, from the get-go, there's no installation by hand. It's all done in an automated, all done in an automated way. We get the, insta, the OS installed, and in some cases, part of that um, image, if it's a custom image, can also include application. And then we have to do the, conf the unique configuration. So e every server has some sort of unique configuration to it, um, whether it's IP address or um, configuration files or whatever. So rather than going in by hand and doing them, there is something, um, something's got the state of this server. Um, we use tools like Puppet or Chef or something, and that state is stored elsewhere. So, so we might have some sort of manifest and a list of, uh, of what this server should look like in terms of the applications that are installed and how they're configured. So we've got the OS patches. Uh, so we maybe will go into a central repository and download those patches. We've got the packages for that operating system. 
It could be anything from like a, a Ubuntu packages or they could be special packages downloaded from a, a, a central repository. Um, and then the application. And those are installed onto that system in an automated way. One of the biggest differences between these two, now functionally they can, be, they can look pretty much the same. They're both virtual machines or uh, on the pet side it might be a physical server, but um, they both got applications running on them. They both got operating systems. It could even be the same operating system. But Cattle, the state is stored not on the server. It's stored somewhere else. It's stored on the immutable image that it's booted from, and it's stored in, in some other sort of tooling that we've got. Um, so Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Salt Stack. Um, there is other tools like uh, Cisco Clicker or uh, Cisco Cloud Center, which is formerly Clicker. Um, so there's a number of different tools that we have um, uh, that we can use is kind of the, the the statement of record or sometimes we can use a lot of those tools in conjunction with each other on the pet side um, the state isn't really stored anywhere except on the server itself and herein lies the problem with pets with pets this actual state of a given server is usually not very well known these servers are sedimentary there are OS's installed and then patches are installed and more patches and more patches Applications are installed, configuration files. I mean, whether it's uh, Linux or Windows or any of the BSDs, the configuration for a given server is typically spread across dozens or even hundreds of files throughout the file systems. We don't really have any central location for a lot of times for where they are or what's in them or how they should be configured. So the problem is, is, is that if we lose this pet, we don't really have any way to recreate it. So what do we do? We have a lot of tools in place to try to keep this pet safe. For one, from an operational perspective, we use things like local vMotion to keep the server up and running. Um, but that's more of a logistical benefit than, than, than in terms of keeping a pet safe. We do things like we'll have to back up the VM so that we can back up this entire virtual machine. And often in conjunction, we also do snapshots of the state of the virtual disks for this virtual machine so that we can keep it nice and safe. Something happens to it, we just go back to our previous snapshot back in time. Another operational problem with this, um, other than that we can't recreate this, is that the application is really closely tied to the server it's running on. That's, whole, that's a whole point about about uh, v uh, VMware. VMware made uh, made um, a lot of their can owe a lot of their success to how well they treat pets. VMware is and has been and continues to be the premier platform for dealing with pets. Um, it it uh, has the most tooling in place and third party extensions and so forth in order to treat pets very well. So they've done very well for themselves because of this. But the application and the operating system are very tightly entwined in this world. It's very hard to separate the two. It's kind of like I've got a, um, a container of sugar and I've got a container of flour. If you mix them together, it's very difficult to separate them. Yeah, you can, but it takes uh, quite a bit of work. But if you think about it, the whole reason this virtual machine exists is not because we like to have virtual machines running. The whole reason a virtual machine exists is because of that application. In the cattle world, we separate the application from the operating system so that we can instantiate um, an operating system when we need it, and then we can have the, uh, the application installed onto it. Um, because in terms of how we care for a virtual machine, and in, in terms of how we deal with the virtual machine, virtual machine is pretty much, uh, it's not something we really care about. So in the cattle world, we have a manifest of what a given virtual machine looks like. We have the state, we have a deterministic outcome based on what we have on this manifest and we can recreate any cattle if it ever goes if anything bad ever happens to it since if uh, cattle if something bad happens to it we can recreate it the only thing we really have to worry about is backing up the data for the application and then have a way to reinstantiate that application the operating system we no longer care about because we get that from a mutable image and then we can do things like automatic updates to the automatic patching and so forth. But this is a highly deterministic, highly automated scenario. So that if I ever needed to recreate this, this virtual machine, no problem, I'd just kick off a, an instantiation strip. And that usually takes about just a couple of minutes or even just dozens of seconds. Where in the pet world, it can take a long time to recreate a system. 
and hopefully we've got these tooling in place to recreate something um, and if not then we've got a lot of problems um, with cattle everything is deterministic and we back up the data which is typically you know dozens or hundreds of megabytes or maybe even a few gigs whereas the virtual machine you know, just the normal standard uh, virtual disk files probably gonna be about 40 gigabyte backing up the app and data uh, I don't know maybe 300 megabyte depending on the application of course and depending on the data um, so the cattle world makes things a lot more deterministic a lot more predictable um, it also makes things a lot more portable in one of my previous talks I talk about um, how long distance vMotion is kind of a dumpster fire and the whole premise for long distance vMotion is of a VM centric infrastructure where we're doing whatever we can to move VMs from location to another if you go into the cattle world we don't have to move the VM we just have to move the application so we can stand up a virtual machine in a given location and we can stand up a virtual machine in another location because we have the state in this manifest sitting somewhere we instantiate the virtual machines from that immutable image so we've got our OS and then we have some centralized location as a repository so this could be something like github or it could be just a um, an amazon s3 bucket or even as simple as an ftp server so that we can load in the application onto this new virtual machine and then through deterministic uh, these deterministic tooling we can instantiate the configuration files on them and we can have the same application running in both data centers and in terms of syncing up data we sync up data through the repository and through something like a database sync or a NoSQL database sync because um, most applications will typically have some sort of state and that state is often stored into a database of some sort whether it's a uh, relational database or a non-relational database or some sort of um, document store we just sync those up and we can instantiate these virtual machines in both locations and this is a far superior way to handle um, HA and disaster recovery um, versus setting up something all these other utilities like OTV and Lisp and some sort of back-end uh, data store um, uh, sync so there's all these things that are just um, too much of a pain if we if we build a cattle based world we can really um, we can really handle our HADRS a lot better typically um, so we're moving from a VM centric uh, world into an app centric world because if you think about it again this is what we care about we care about the application and the data we don't care about the OS the OS is just there because we need it to because the application needs it uh, to access primitives such as network storage and compute there's no real reason to move an app, uh, a virtual machine from one data center to another or from one cloud to another um, so we're moving to a more application centric world um, which brings us to um, as we move to this more application centric world well, so why why are we packaging um, I mean initially we had a physical server and that was the unit uh, of compute and network and storage we had the application installed uh, we had the OS installed and then we had the application installed but we're just, basically we were dealing with the physical server and the application and the server themselves were uh, very difficult to separate from each other when we in the first wave of virtualization when we went um, physical to virtual um, sort of the same thing we still had our operating system and then we had our application and we were still encapsulating the application into this virtual machine we were encapsulating the the application into a physical server we're encapsulating it into a virtual machine um, and in the application the OS were in, in the system it was running on were, were much more inseparable as we moved on and we moved to the cattle notion 
we have a much better delineation between the application and the operating system and the server it runs on because we're starting to deal more with the application itself. And then finally, um, kind of sort of the next step in this is, um, is containers. So a container encapsulates the, um, the application without the operating system. Um, it also encapsulates the configuration for that uh, application. And then we can install that uh, container on, uh, on any host that is running the operating system that container was built for, such as Linux or even Windows has containers now. Uh, FreeBC has something like jail, has, has had jails uh, long before containers, even Solaris zones were out. But we're encapsulating the application into that container. And then we can run it on any Linux system, for example, that runs Docker container services on it. One makes our application more portable. Um, and this this container is, again, something like 30 megabytes or 300 megabytes, so much smaller than the virtual machines that we run them on. Oftentimes, we're going to run a container, a lot of our container um, operations right now, uh, still run on top of virtual machines. We spin up a virtual machine. It's a very base install. It's got Linux on it. It's got Docker, maybe a couple other utilities for the administrators. But for the most part, we just load. A developers encapsulate the application into a container, and then they can move that container around wherever they want. This VM could be in my local data center. And then this VM could be in something like Amazon or Azure or one of the cloud providers or Rackspace. Should be AWS, not AWZ. Um, so spin up a virtual machine, that it just becomes a place to hold containers. Do I care about this virtual machine anymore? Not really. Once I move my containers off of it, I can destroy that virtual machine and not have to worry about anything. Um, one more note. Um, so a lot of you are thinking probably, and I know I thought this too, that, okay, well, this is great and all, but all my applications are the more traditional applications, not this cloud native stuff. And I have a, I have a talk on cloud native applications. So how am I going to relate? You know, I've got a whole bunch of traditional applications. None of them are containerized. How am I going to relate this to my operations? Well, um, we are moving from traditional applications to more what we call cloud native applications. Um, some of the characteristics of traditional applications, if you use um, uh, traditional applications are referred to as stateful applications. So um, we, need, we need to keep the virtual machine relatively safe because um, each virtual machine or each server has a unique state to it. Whereas, um, so I've got state one, I've got state two. So state could be things like shopping carts or they could be things like login sessions or typically you need to each virtual machine and your load balancer needs to turn on something uh, called persistence or sticky or server affinity depending on the vendor, in order to keep users tied to the same virtual machine. Um, cloud native applications have either are either stateless or shared state. Um, and if they're stateless, that just means they store their state somewhere else on like a, on a database or a shared cache. Um, so we've got a, a unified state across all of our virtual machines. Because of that, we do not need to turn on persistence on, on the load balancer. Again, you can look at my uh, look check out my YouTube channel. I've got a talk about this, a much more involved talk about um, traditional applications versus cloud native applications. With cloud native applications, we do not need persistence. That makes us much more flexible. But in the in the, at least in the enterprise, most of our applications are still traditionally uh, it's still traditional applications. Other names for traditional um, enterprise applications are uh, sometimes we refer to as mode one or platform two. So first platform, uh, or, or a second platform, or platform two. Uh, first platform is mainframe. Second platform is client server. And then the third platform is cloud native. 
So just some extra terminology for you, um, and also referred to as mode two. Um, mode one and mode two are, are more often used, um, for example, Cisco uses this. So I'm a Cisco instructor, so I tend to use, uh, uh, um, or I, I have been a Cisco instructor, and I, and I teach Cisco networking courses um, for Lumos. Um, and um, so I tend to use, I tend to be more familiar with that world. Um, but I know my, uh, Cisco, for example, has used mode one and mode two as um, uh, and to differentiate more traditional operations from new operations. But mode one and mode two, there's also, so this is the app world right here. Mode one and mode two can also refer to operations. So I'm going to do um, infrastructure. Now, here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. You can do pets and cattle, or pets or cattle for traditional um, app type of applications. Because we have the tooling in order to uh, that we can instantiate a new virtual machine, we can install our traditional application onto that virtual machine. We still need to turn persistence on our load balancers, but we still can use deterministic virtual machines and deterministic um, operations. We don't have to do pets uh, just because we have a traditional application. We can do cattle. Now, of course, on the, on the cloud native world, um, this is almost always cattle, and there's no reason to do pets. Um, but we can migrate to a cattle style operation with traditional applications. So again, we're separating the application realm from the infrastructure realm. So we can move to cattle um, for traditional uh, applications. So um, gone on for about 20 minutes. So I, I think this pretty much covers all of our topics um, for this talk. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. That's, um, I, I'm, uh, let me put up the Twitter, at T Burke. Uh, that's at T-B-O-U-R-K-E. And uh, you can find me blogging at datacenteroverlords.com. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.